Hi, I'm Ryan from Monster Logo Studios. I've been focused on finishing the next Barricades at Night album recently, and I felt lacking in inspiration for my electronic compositions. To help push myself out of writer's block, I'm going to try something different. This will be the first in what I hope will become a series of minimalist writing challenges. In the same way that it takes me an hour to dig through the abundance of streamable content to find 30 minutes of entertainment, I sometimes feel like I spend all of my writing sessions digging through presets and samples, rather than getting the melodies out of my mind and onto the paper, so to speak. To start with, I want to try a four sample challenge. The rules are simple. One, only use four samples. Raw samples, no synth engines, no wavetables, just the basics. Two, chain samples are off limits. I have several samples that contain all sounds for a single pocket operator, for example. It'd be real easy to slice these and turn one sample into 16, but for this exercise, I consider that to be cheating. Three, slicing and other manipulations is acceptable. Pitch shifting, envelope and LFO modulations, applying effects, or other non-destructive edits of the raw sample are all in bounds. But any destructive editing that results in the creation of a new file is off limits. And last, four, effects are good. I can't live without delay and reverb. With the ground rules set, the first thing I need is to select my samples. I recently picked up Cosmos by Waves, which may still be on sale for $14.99. For the record, I don't have any kind of affiliation with Waves, it was just at the top of my Google search for sample management, and I use a lot of their plugins as part of my standard tool set and logic. I've been thinking a little bit about my sample selection strategy, and to start with, I'm thinking I'll need some kind of bass but preferably one that could also be pitched around for melodies and chords would also be ideal. I'll also need to grab some kind of back beat that can be sliced up rather than eating up three sample slots with separate snare, kick, and hi-hat. And I might also want an additional melodic element, maybe a pad of some kind. Lastly, some kind of effect, maybe a swell or swoosh, something with a long tail that I can slice up to make the most out of. To start, I'll set up a new collection in Cosmos. I'll add anything that stands out, and then I'll go through and trim to just the four samples that fit best together. I know this seems like the opposite of what I intended, I'm spending all this time scrolling through samples. But there's a big difference between laying out all of your tools ahead of time, versus interrupting the job to hunt for a tool, right in the middle of everything, and losing all of your creative momentum. Let's find that bass first. I'm gonna switch back to the grid view. And I kind of want something that's more of a thud. I know Waves had a couple of really good dry bass samples. Let's see if there's something muted. That's great. That could be the winner. Should probably stick with a C though. Let's look at beats. Uh, like something in the eighty BPM range. That's too messy. That could work. What, what I'm listening for is um, clean instrument separation. That way if I slice up this sample, I can isolate the snare or the kick for uh, creating fills. I like that one. I think I'm worried about the shaker. That's cool. A little bit quick, but... <laughs> they just compressed the shit out of it. This is the two bar version. Look at that. I'm on to you, waves. Again, the same sample. The 
These sneaky bastards. Alright, I'm gonna go with what I got. Uh, Alright, let's grab some kind of pad, maybe? that for like an E flat major thing too. Hmm. Let's try it. Okay. All right. Um, some kind of effects. Is there a search criteria? Yeah. Look at that. That might be a winner. That's disgusting. envelope and slicing up that sample uh, the fact that it's a large pitch sweep means I could make it fit uh, with whatever else is going on in the song around it all right here we go Settle on a bass first. I'm gonna go the easy route, stick with the C, uh, knowing that my destination device is gonna be the Dirty Wave M8, and this is gonna come in as a C. It'll come in as a C4, native pitch, and then. This will just make life easier. So let's get rid of the rest of this. And how do I do that? Like that. Beautiful. Remove. Remove. Okay. That's my bass. Good. Which beat? Uh, drums. This one's got a little too much kick. I can always add more. That's a little fast, but I almost like that I'd have to slow it down. the ring and the snare on this one and that tambourine hit with it also roll off a little top end but that's the winner so let's clear that bitch all right and now my pad it's, it's definitely that guy so kill that Kill that. All right. And then my effects. This 
one's just too long. I don't want to deal with that. So here's the winner. Those four. I'm going to get these loaded up on the M8 and let's start working. All right. Let's talk about the setup. Uh, I've got the M8. I've loaded my samples on there. I've got uh, a handful of instruments set up. Actually, four. Exactly four. One with each sample. The bass, the breakbeat, chords, and uh, that effects sample. I'll probably use additional instruments as I um, you know, decide I want to maybe slice up some of these samples and um, reuse them for other purposes. So. Uh, just wanted to set up these four to get the ball going. Um, I've created a new blank project, 80 BPM. And I've also got the OMX 27 hooked up that I'll probably use for um, some melody writing. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way. Hopefully you're seeing the M8 screen somewhere around mm, here. And let's start with, I'll uh, probably lay in the beat. Easy enough. Um... Do some fun stuff with this. Let's do. Actually, nothing. If we just do that. There we go. I just wanted that kick on the and a four. Okay. Just something to work with. And... Let's get something simple going with the bass. Yeah, that's cool. All right, I'm gonna actually demo this uh, record feature and, or try to. So, Try that.
I'm gonna mess with the uh, kind of sound here. The tune or degrade rather a little bit the wrong way. Here it gets fucking mangled. In a good way. There's already a little bit of reverb in the sample, so I'm not gonna mess with that. That's cool. And then the bass. Uh, let's see. Mess with the loop start. Actually, I think I just want regular. There we go.
shuffle. This one's going to be a lot. Uh, actually, I'm going to come in and let's take a look at this. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got eight chords. So let's do eight slices. And let's make them for loop. Actually, hey, oscillate. Uh, I got a better idea for these. Um,
course, we got a lot of mono here, so I need something to kind of fill up the outside. And we might... Decrease that modulation a little bit. A little bit of delay. So we get a C minor. Uh, what else do we have? with these um, slices just to make them a little bit cleaner so let's reference the file and let's move that first one there chord cool Overwrite. I'm following my rules. I'm not creating a new sample. It's the same one. I just have slice markers. Okay. Let's change that baseline to minor. and pitch this bitch. Let's do that.
uh, like a six. Fuck it, let's try it. And then I'm dropping to that E, so let's do. Stealing the effect.
This is feeling a bit like an epic fail. I'm going to take that effect and try to turn it into a shaker. Why? Why not? The Raker. At this point, we're 45 minutes into this video, which really means I've been going at it for almost 90 minutes, and I've hit kind of a dead end. In retrospect, I had really good momentum at the beginning. When I started fighting with the pad and the effect samples, though, things kind of went off the rails. I do intend to keep working with this track, and I think the initial bounds I set for myself resulted in some good creative output early on, but it was definitely a front-loaded labor curve. I 
intend to do more of these, and now that I know I'm limited to a two octave pitch range with samples, I'll make sure to select a separate melodic input for the next one. In fact, I wish I had just picked two separate monophonic melodic samples instead of the pad and the effects. I can always mangle those to create other percussive bits, so I'll live and learn, or maybe just live and screw it up again the next time, but in a different way. These sessions are unpredictable. Sometimes I feel like a conduit, sometimes every note is a battle. This was definitely more of the latter. Again, I'm Ryan from Monster Logo Studios. Hope you enjoyed watching me struggle. Let me know if you have fun ideas for the next one, and I'll talk to you soon.